I think it was a very interesting discussion. Um, the high-level panel of experts of the CFS had commissioned a study on social protection, which is very comprehensive, 95 pages. And from that, there was a decision box on recommendations for action that the CFS could take forward. So while this morning's decision didn't, discussion didn't really focus on the absolute content of that, it was a broader discussion. And it's useful to hear what the different member states think about different aspects of social protection, about the priorities for social protection as a way of moving forward a consensus and a dialogue on what we will prioritize. I think in social protection we're talking about something that people will talk about the right to social security but it's a progressive right. It recognizes that people need resources to achieve it. So that means you have to set priorities within the programs that you're going to deliver. For me personally, prioritizing interventions, for example, in the first thousand days in your social protection, that may be supplemental feeding for children six to 24 months. It might be a conditional cash transfer to pregnant or lactating women. Um, to take, for example, a pregnant woman to take antenatal care or deliver a baby in a safe facility. Those are the foundations of a good nutritional start in life. So we want to prevent children crossing the age of two stunted. So that's where I see the priorities and that's how you tailor social protection to be more in tune with achieving nutrition. I think there's, there's many sort of people use very different terms. So some people use social assistance, some use social security, some only use social protection, some use safety nets as a subset of social protection. In WFP, we still use the term safety nets. Um, we regard that as the set of programs that are designed to meet the needs of the poor. We don't consider, for example, unemployment insurance and uh, national insurance programs, which would be in the domain of ILO. So our focus is purely on the programs that are targeted to the poorest people. Most of those will be non-contributory, but there are a few programs now which do have a contribution. Um, so some of the micro insurance programs that WFP does on the basis of weather, we regard still as safety net programs. Exactly. Um, we have a range of programs. So our first thing is to target the poorest, to identify the food insecure, then to identify which particular group within that we work with. So for example, if we were trying to prevent stunting in a child six to 24 months, then it may be a supplemental food transfer. If we are trying to support overall food consumption for a household and increase the resources available, it might be a cash transfer, it might be a voucher transfer, and that voucher could either be a voucher for a food bundle or it could be a voucher that has a specific monetary value but enables people to take it to a store and buy products, food products within a certain range. So for example in um, Palestine we use a voucher program uh, because it supports the local dairy industry um, and people can go into the shop and then use it to buy the types of products that we couldn't deliver in a food aid chain, for example. So milk, dairy, yogurts. I think we always have very high outcomes for the CFS. Um, when you bring member states together, it's a, a forum for dialogue. Um, I think it's good to get views shared um, as we look forward. We find the consensus where we have it that enables us to start moving policies forward. But you also identify the areas where you don't have consensus, which enables people to do the research, to bring the evidence, to have the discussions in an ongoing way to build towards the next CFS.